Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who brings us together today to worship you and your Son, Yeshua. We ask for you to have your Holy Spirit be present and help us this day. Well, good day, everybody, or hello. Um, if you want a title for this, it's going to be God's Holy Days, Part 1, Passover to Pentecost. God, our Heavenly Father, and our Messiah, Yeshua, are busy working. They have been for a long time. They're working out our salvation. Their purpose is to grow the family of God. Their plan was worked out before the foundation of the physical universe. God's plan for us, you and I, begins with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob, who he renamed Israel. And after 430 years, the plan would move on with Moses and the children of Israel. The holy days represent steps in God's plan for our salvation. Be assured, God has a well-thought-out plan for the salvation of mankind. The salvation of mankind starts with his freeing, teaching, and leading ancient Israel. Ancient Israel was meant to be a shining example to the world by following God. They were to be a light to the world. Their job was to follow the covenant and show the nations how well keeping the covenant with God works. Keeping God's covenant could and would bring peace and prosperity. Unfortunately, Israel rebelled. They broke with keeping God's covenant. In Exodus 19.8, that's Exodus 19.8, then all the people answered together and said, All the Lord has spoken, we will do. They had agreed to the covenant. God told them what to expect if they broke the covenant. In Deuteronomy chapter 27, verses 11 through 26, talks about that. When half the tribes of Israel stood on Mount Grism, and half the tribes of Israel stood on Mount Ebal, and the Levites stood in the valley... And all the Levites shouted from the valley the commandments, and the other tribes answered with shouts from the mountainsides. If you haven't read, read that, it's quite inspiring. They shouted out the commandments with the blessings and the cursings. This was a dramatic demonstration meant to be taught to everyone then and now. These events were meant to inspire all the generations to come. And if you think about it, you're talking about at least a half a million people on one mountain, half a million on the other mountain, and however many Levites there were in the middle. That's, that's an awesome thing. God had two plans. One for the nationhood and land grants for ancient Israel. And the second to spiritually convert, train, and adopt people into his family. The purpose of these well-thought-out plans for today is to prepare people for that transition from physical beings to spiritual beings. God sent instructions with the living word on Messiah Jesus. These instructions are meant to change the way we think and act toward God and each other. These instructions were handed down to us through the five books of Moses. Passover, which we just experienced, is not a holy day. It is, however, a time of commitment. And as Isaiah wrote, when he spoke, when he wrote of the Messiah yet to come and Passover, and to whom has an arm of the Lord been revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. He has no form or comeliness. And when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteem him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. 
All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of all of us. You can read the rest of this in Isaiah chapter 53. And it's well worth reading. And it tells us how the Messiah could inspire Isaiah to write before he came in, the, in person. This is also a time to remember and do the new added instructions given at the final supper the night before our Messiah died. In Matthew 26, verse 26, that's Matthew 26, 26, it tells us he blessed the bread and said, take, eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and said, drink from it all you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Passover is a personal invitation to each person called by God. We are expected to show our commitment by following God's instructions. Our commitment at Passover says, I heard you and will follow your instructions. Leviticus 23.5, that's Leviticus 23.5, tells us that on the 14th day of the first month at twilight is the Lord's Passover. In Leviticus 23.6, that's 23.6, and on the 15th day of the same month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. This is the first holy day, the first day of unleavened bread. In the two weeks leading up to this first holy day, we are to have cleansed out the leaven and searched our inner selves to identify sin and work at removing it. These days of unleavened bread start our instructions. We are told to rout out sin. The putting out of leaven is a type or representation of putting out sin. We are taught to do this so God and Messiah Yeshua can start working with us. Leaven is symbolic of sin. Putting out leaven is symbolic of putting out sin. How do we put sin out of our lives? First, we ask God to help us identify the sin. Second, we ask help from the Holy Spirit. Third, we repent. To repent is to turn away from whatever is it is that causes us to sin. When we do our part, the Holy Spirit will do its work in us. And if you look at 1 John 1, 17 and 18, or not 1 John, excuse me, John 1, 17 and 18, for the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Messiah Yeshua, Jesus Christ. No one has seen God at any time. This is referring to the Father. The only begotten Son who is in the bosom of the Father, he has declared him. If it was not from the Messiah Yeshua, Jesus Christ, we would not know of the Father. Let's understand who the God of the Old Testament is. Yeshua, Jesus, is the God of the Old Testament. Our Heavenly Father cannot be among sin or sinners, so he sent his Son, Yeshua, to intervene and save mankind. In Romans 13.11, that's Romans 13.11, and do this knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. Yeshua sent a lot, spent a lot of time dealing with the lot he expected on our behalf. Matthew 26, 39, that's Matthew 26, 39, speaking to what Yeshua did. He went a little further away from the others and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you. And again, a little while later, he prays again in Matthew 26, 42. Again, Yeshua, Jesus, prayed, saying, O oh, my Father, if this cup cannot pass away from me unless I drink it, your will be done. This was our Heavenly Father's plan and His will to save mankind and bring them into His family. Yeshua, Jesus, gave Himself as the one and only perfect sacrifice. There was no other, there is no other, there's only our Messiah, Yeshua the Christ. In John 1.29, that's John 1.29. The
The next day John saw Yeshua, Jesus, coming toward him, and he said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. He is and was from the beginning the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Only a perfect sinless sacrifice could cleanse mankind of so much sin. Why did God send Yeshua at this time, at the time he sent him? Well, in Matthew 15, 24, Yeshua said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And in Mark 2, 17, Jesus Yeshua said, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. In Matthew 18, 11, For the Son of Man has come to save that which was lost. So you tell me, what was lost? Who did he send his disciples to preach to? In Matthew 10, 11, that's 10, 11, he sent his disciples to the lost sheep of Israel. They knew where they were. Look around and look at our nation. We are the ones in need of a physician. We are Israel. We may be the United States today, but we are the descendants of Israel, and that's why God is working with us. God does not like people to make up substitute commandments. The ten he gave cannot be improved on and should not be changed by men. In the Gospel of John 1.1, it tells us, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and he was in the beginning with God. And all things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and life was the light of men. Yeshua was the God in the Garden of Eden. When Adam and Eve sinned, Yeshua, Jesus, knew that, that act was what that act was going to mean. He could see all the suffering and grief it was going to cause. He was the one who walked with Enoch 300 years and took him away. Enoch gave hope, for if one could walk with God, others could. In Genesis 6, 9, we read, Noah was a just man, perfect in his generations. Noah walked with God. Yeshua, Jesus, was the one who instructed Noah to build the ark and fill it with life. In Genesis 12, 2, Yeshua is the one who made the covenant of promise with Abraham. In verse 2, he, it says, He told Abraham, I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. And you shall be a blessing, and I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse those who curse you. And in you, all families of the earth shall be blessed. He also passed down the same promise to Isaac and Jacob. Jacob became Israel and fathered the children of Israel. Now God worked with and through Joseph in Egypt. The family of Jacob, Israel, was saved from the famine in the land of Canaan. Seventy people, Israel's family, were invited by Pharaoh and went down to Egypt during the famine. Things went well in the land of Canaan for many years. Then came a Pharaoh who did not know or trust Israel, and he enslaved them. After 430 years, it was time to act and make the children of Israel a nation. God and Yeshua picked Moses and sent him to Pharaoh. Pharaoh hardened his heart and would not comply. This brought the plagues on Egypt. We all know about the plagues and how each was directed against the different Egyptian gods. This was done to show Pharaoh that the God of Israel is God. God wanted Israel free to worship him across the desert at Mount Sinai. During this time, Moses received <clears throat> instructions for the start of the holy year. The start of the new year comes in the month of Abib, when the barley is ready for harvest. You should read all of Exodus especially the new instructions for Israel, Exodus 12, 1 through 20. The instructions for when to begin the year, the instructions to pick a lamb from the sheep or the goats and on the tenth of the month, and the instructions for the proper killing of the lamb. The spreading of blood on the doorposts and lentil, the instructions for eating the Passover, 
and for the days of unleavened bread. Let's look and see what else is here to see and understand. Leaven is standing in for sin. There are important things to see here. First, God, our Heavenly Father, cannot abide sin in His presence. We need to remember sin is death's harbinger. Sin leads to death. When we are stuck in sin, we are dead to our Heavenly Father. And Romans 5.12 tells us, Therefore, just as one man, through one man, sin entered the world, and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men, because all sinned. God cannot deal with people who are stuck in sin. The second thing here is God wants us to succeed. He makes his Holy Spirit available to help us, to guide us, teach us, and give us success through this process. The lesson of unleavened bread is you can do without leaven for a week. During the same time, you should have worked at putting sin away from yourself. Sin, however, is insidious. It hides in places inside of us and has to be routed out. When we decide to work diligently to rid ourselves of sin, we need help. Our Heavenly Father, at the request of Yeshua, has made His Holy Spirit available to help us in this end time. At our time of need, He will help us. In Matthew chapter 22, verse 32, that's 22, 32, but concerning the resurrection of the dead, have you not read what was spoken to you by God, saying, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. I am, the God of, I am not the God of the dead, but of the living. Our God is the God of the living and not the dead. In Matthew chapter 9, verse 12, Yeshua, Jesus said, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. And then he said, but go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice, for I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Do not be discouraged. If we turn to Romans chapter 3, verse 21, we read, but now the righteousness of God, apart from the law is revealed, being witnessed by the law and by the prophets, even the righteousness of God through faith in Yeshua Jesus to all who believe. For there is no difference, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Yeshua Jesus Christ, from whom God set forth as a propitiation by His blood through faith to demonstrate his righteousness, because in his forbearance God has passed over the sins that were previously committed to demonstrate at the present time his righteousness. That he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Yeshua Jesus. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1, we read, Moreover, brethren, I do not want you to be unaware that our fathers were under the cloud, all passed through the sea and ate the same spiritual food and drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Messiah Yeshua, Jesus Christ. But with most of them, God was not well pleased, for their bodies were scattered in the wilderness. Now these things became our examples to the intent that we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. The time between the last day of unleavened bread and Pentecost are tied together with a thread or cord. Seven Sabbaths in a day equals 50 days, or count 50. To some believers, this is the time of counting the Omer. An Omer is a measure. It is equal to one-tenth of an ephad. In modern measure, that's about two quarts. The thing was that they would put things in or take things out of a basket to count the days. The important thing is the omer was used to measure the count, measure or count the 50 days between these two holy days. 
The purpose is to clean out of our spiritual spaces and sweep them clean. Then we can make room for more of God's Holy Spirit in us. The Holy Spirit in us is how Messiah Yeshua, Jesus Christ, lives in us. During this process, we should be reevaluating our lives, our habits, and what changes we still need to work on. We all need to make changes. In this life, we are all works in progress. Even King David saw that sin in his life was a serious problem. He knew enough to go before God and ask forgiveness. Can we do less? If we turn to Psalm 51, verses 1 through 4, we'll read some of what David wrote. He asked God, he said, Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Against you only have I sinned and done evil in your sight, that you may be found just when you speak and blameless when you judge. And there's more to that, and it's well worth reading the rest of Psalm 51. We have this 50-day period to address issues in our lives. We need to bring these issues to our Heavenly Father and ask for His forgiveness and the help of His Holy Spirit in correcting our flaws. It is our duty to study the Holy Scriptures, meditate on them, pray for understanding, and fast to show that we are sincere. So we should pray, fast, meditate, study, and then do some more of it again and again. This is the way we can grow closer to God and Messiah Yeshua. We have been invited to embrace our Heavenly Father and our older brother. Let's all bow down and embrace all their instructions. This is not pick and choose. It is our duty to keep the Sabbaths, the holy days, the commandments, the statutes and laws. In short, it is our duty to keep God's covenant. If we don't know what the covenant is, we should study it and learn for ourselves. And it's in the first five books of Moses. Think what marvelous works were done in ancient Israel, and think what they have done for us. Stripes for healing, shed blood for cleansing, the removal of sin, and then eventually the removal of death will come. Consider the tremendous possibility of salvation and adoption into God's family. Think about their love and the sacrifice they endured for us and their awesome commitment. It is so much, is it so much for them to ask us to learn to keep the covenant? We are instructed by Paul concerning Paul, starting in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 20, but now Messiah, Christ, is risen from the dead and has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by man came death, by man also came resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Messiah Yeshua, Jesus Christ, all shall be made alive. But each one in his own order, Messiah first, the first fruits, afterward those who are Messiahs at his coming. Then comes the end, when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father, when he puts an end to all rule and all authority and power, for he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that will be destroyed will be death. For when he has put all things under his feet, but when he says all things are put under him, it is evident that he who put all things under him is accepted, that being the Father. As we move toward Pentecost, it's good to reflect on the travels after exiting the sea of ancient Israel. And let's look at some of the miracles our Messiah arranged on the trip through the desert. Starting in Exodus 14, verse 30, that's Exodus 14, 30, the last day of unleavened bread, thus Israel saw the great work 
which the Lord had done in Egypt, so the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord in his servant Moses. And the Egyptians will trouble you no more. They were swallowed by the sea. In Exodus chapter 15, verse 22, Israel complained. The bitter waters were made sweet. Moses was given instructions and put a piece of a tree in the water to sweeten the water. The next miracle in Exodus 16, verse 13, Israel complained. They didn't have enough food. God sent quail in the evening and manna, the bread from heaven, in the morning. All were fed. In Exodus 16, 13 through 18, is, uh, uh, excuse me, 17, 6, Israel complained and the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I will stand before you on the rock in Horeb, and you shall strike the rock, and water will come out of it, that the people may drink. Moses did as he was told, and struck the rock, and water came out of the rock, and all Israel's thirst was quenched. Then in 17.8, we read about Joshua, and how the Amalekites bothered the Israelites, and God gave Moses instruction to hold this rod up, and Joshua would have victory. And when he got tired, Hur held up one arm, and Aaron held up the other arm, and they put a rock under him to sit on, and Israel prevailed. And Joshua had a victory by God. Then came, in Exodus 18, Jethro's advice. He watched Moses, his son-in-law, and how much he had to deal with and how difficult it was. And so he took him aside and he said, let me give you some advice and God will, will say that this is right. And so he told him how to set up judges, judges over a thousand, judges over a hundred, judges over fifties, and judges over tens. Jethro's advice set the judges in place. They judged Israel until the time of the kings. <clears throat> and then in Exodus 19, they finally get to Mount Sinai. That's the next holy day, and those instructions are yet to come. For us, the Passover sacrifice of our Messiah is the cornerstone of our salvation. If not for Yeshua, Jesus, we would have no way to become spiritually cleansed. We would be forever lost. We would be destined for the second death. Thankfully, our Messiah and our Heavenly Father would have none of us lost. They have a great plan for our salvation. Our Heavenly Father gave Yeshua a mission and a commission to bring us to repentance and save as many as he can. Who is he to save? First, the lost children of Israel, and then the nations. This time now, before Pentecost, is our time to work at growing closer to God. We need to open our hearts, open our minds, and let the Holy Spirit do its work. In Revelation 21, verse 7, that's Revelation 21, 7, tells us, He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. We are in training to be kings and priests in the coming kingdom of God. Along with this message, I would suggest reading Psalm 1 and Psalm 8, because they both relate to it. So I will end with this blessing known as Aaron's Blessing, which is Numbers chapter 6, verse 23 on, where God instructed Moses, speak to Aaron and his son, saying, This is the way you shall bless the children of Israel. Say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So they shall put my name on the children of Israel, and I will bless them. Thank you for your time and patience.